This is the low free edge, which may very well be the thinnest mechanical keyboard currently available, which has quickly made its place into my top five favorite keyboards of all time. Not only is this keyboard only 5.4 millimeters at its thinnest, but it's also built extraordinarily well, have some of the best low profile switches I've ever used, and it actually looks pretty badass. If you've seen their popular low free flow, this is the follow up to that and may very well be a big upgrade. Now, I'm not a keyboard aficionado by any means, nor have I ever dabbled with any sort of custom keyboards, and I'm not sure if it counts but I am a keyboard enthusiast even still who only really cares about premium pre-built boards. That said, over the last three weeks, I have been using this keyboard as my main keyboard for gaming, all of my creative work, and even my accounting day job. This keyboard is now live on Kickstarter, which I will have linked in the description. As for what you get inside the box, it's pretty basic with the keyboard itself, a right angle type C cable, a stand you can put together from the leftover carbon fiber materials, and this tiny accessories pouch, which does have some accent keys, which are pretty badass. When it comes down to the build and design of this keyboard, the main thing right off the bat is the size and weight. This has been the thinnest low profile mechanical keyboard I've used to date, that doesn't really feel like there's any compromises. This is a compact 84 key layout, which does give you most of the keys you might need while still keeping a small footprint. Again, coming in at 5.4 millimeters thin in its wedge form factor and at 485 grams, it's surprisingly sturdy and doesn't have much flex to the body. The carbon fiber finish and magnesium alloy looks pretty sweet, which also probably attributes to how thin this keyboard is. There are some rubber feet on the bottom end as well to keep the board from moving around. And so far it's done a good job on my desk services and both leather and wool desk mats. The underside also has these machine holes in the metal body which looks pretty badass and adds to the aesthetic. On the top end there is an on off switch which is also how you swap between the Bluetooth and wired connections. Lastly the bottom does have this tiny LED indicator for battery levels which will breathe red at 20% and flash red sub 5%. And while the keycaps aren't shining through this keyboard is backlit which I can appreciate. It's not RGB or anything out of the box which is actually how I prefer my backlighting. I can say the backlighting doesn't particularly get that bright so it's mostly meant for dark spaces. From a connection standpoint you can connect this with up to three Bluetooth devices. For myself I I just have this swapping between my MacBook Air for all my creative work and my Windows laptop for my day job. Otherwise, when it comes down to my PC gaming, I opt to use a wired connection since this is mostly how I play competitively. Since this does have a 1000 Hz polling rate, there's absolutely zero perceptible input lag for gaming. Likewise, these keys have a wildly low key travel at only 6.5 millimeters, which is always a plus for gaming. From a gaming standpoint overall, I haven't had any doubt or issues playing on here, which is a legitimate requirement for myself when playing competitively. The switches on here are the Kali Palm 2.0 switches, which again are insanely thin. In terms of keycaps, you've got these hella low profile PBT caps, which do have a nice curve to them. They're also not slippery whatsoever and kind of feel like they have a microscopic grain to them, so they actually feel really nice to type with, plus I kind of dig the cyberpunky font. Of course, you can swap out these keycaps as needed, but for me, I'm probably going to just keep one accent key from the accessory kit, but let me know what you guys think looks best, red, orange, or yellow. If anyone does know what these specific keys are, please let me know. I don't know if it's Morse code or something. Now, from a sound standpoint, this is easily in my top three keyboards of all time regarding the switches. They simply sound so good and feel great to type with. If butternut squash ravioli was a sound, this is what it would sound like. Warm, soft, and cozy. So yeah, overall they sound amazing. From a hotkey and function standpoint, everything on here is pretty bare bones, which I actually appreciate. You've got function M and N to swap between Mac and Windows, function right and left to swap between backlighting on, off, or breathing, and lastly there's function 1, 2, and 3 to swap between your Bluetooth devices. Battery wise, this does have a 2000 milliamp hour battery, and I can't really say this is something to worry about since I can always charge it up. And seriously, overall this is probably in my top 3 or 5 keyboards of all time. The aesthetic and thinness of this board is simply amazing, and frankly it looks amazing in just about any setup I've thrown it in. The keys feel great, it's satisfying to use, and it works perfectly. There's only two things I really wish this board had, perhaps a numpad for whenever I am doing my accounting work during the day, and a 2.4 dongle for whenever I do want a game wirelessly. Maybe one day we'll see it, but it's not here right now. But let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below in the comment section. I appreciate you watching till the end. Till next time.